the semi set. But the smiles of those Yeovil fans tell their own story. Only one Jenny Pennant, the goalkeeper, has been a hero. Having played almost 400 football league games across a career that took him to clubs such as Wigan Athletic, Yeovil Town and Newport County, and with notable performances against Arsenal at Highbury in the FA Cup to look back on fondly, Tony Pennock hung up his gloves in 2013. Justifies his status as the record signing for Farnborough Town. Will talk with time, good save by Pennock. And Allen again is on the line to knock it away, this time from Bergkamp. Somebody was definitely on his side when he saved Leon Constantine's spot kick. Then when referee Andy Durso said take it again, Henick saved it again, this time from Jeff Minton. Having had the chance to split his last few years as a goalkeeper whilst also managing the Wales C team, Tony Pennock decided the time was right and took his first steps into full-time coaching when he took up the role of director of youth football initially before then becoming head of academy at Swansea City. We're all looking for a lot more from all of us, if I'm honest. You know, that's the staff, that's, that's the players, 21s, 18s, 16s. We have to push ourselves. Uh, we have to be better every year for us to provide uh, first-team manager with players. That, that's our job and we all have to do even more every year to try and push ourselves closer to that. A fairy tale final that no one could have predicted whatever was going to happen and historic footballing story was set to unfold. It was at a time at when success with the first team was mirrored across the academy as during Pennock's time with the club whilst overseeing the development of the likes of Joe Allen and Jazz Richards other excited young Swansea City players were already making a name for themselves with four successive FAW Youth Cup wins. In 2013, Pennock took the decision to join Hull City, initially as academy manager, and having worked alongside a number of first team managers, was eventually added to the first team coaching staff. It's one that's set up for Hull Stern. Oh, and it ended up in the back of the net. James... Over a nine year period, the club had a mixture of success and heartbreak, with highs of Premier League promotion. FA Cup finals and even European adventures contrasting to Premier League and Championship relegation. Having been heavily involved in the recruitment and development of future Premier League stars such as West Ham's Jared Bowen and Brentford's Keane Lewis Potter whilst at Hull, Pennock's impact was regularly acknowledged by the club's community and as news broke of the appointment as manager of Halford West County social media posts of good luck and gratitude flooded in from Tigers fans, with many extremely grateful for the role played in the Yorkshire club's most recent success, the League One title, that saw the club return to the Championship. Three weeks after Haverford West County's last fixture for the Qatar World Cup, the Bluebirds were now looking to continue their winning streak as the Augie Bridge Meadow hosted high flying Pennabont, a fixture that brought with it a special duo, as taken to the field in the opposite goalmouth was the son of first team manager and facing his dad for the first time in a competitive fixture, Alex Pennock. Davis, Shepherd, Gadigalegar, Arbut says he's in Carreda Ras, Arcaburdiad, Gan Elliot, Dugundi, Credi, Gavner, Hoid. The whole for that a blind Abruzzese and Taro Belgra Nerf for Drausa Kurzbach or the Wiriad again at Duggan. 
Another excellent passing move by the home side was brought to a halt after Ben Fawcett was fouled on the edge of the Pennebont box. It provided Jamie Veal the chance to double the lead. Veal does a kick, Jamie Veal! Kick read, Berth Baith got Jamie Veal. Mae'n ddwy i hwlffordd ar ôl hanner awr. Dwi'n ddim yn sgorio goliau syml, mae'n sgorio goliau hymru. Get in there! Davis, who get in there, he clear it up. Abu Tsis in all mount. Ashley Evans, and he chotli. The gun! Oh, my sharp! Have read the other kid in a a good angle in a bet the other seven. He's got gun panic. Ashley Evans and Blair, the gun and Douglas, panic. Her five. Pressure from the away side was mounting, and an injury to Captain Dylan Rees forced changes in the back line. As Penabont looked for a response. Need a quarter do ya hand there, Drossen out, egg, Reynolds are Tavliad, a flick of line, and Guida Marbetha Davis, and Kareth Clutton, oh, now Timon Drossen has bossed him, Ois Mana, Yori Humphreys, when a kick or smot in, and now to Erbrin de Quarra do even need a hand there, Drossen out, egg, when a wheath, Minid and Kalikuneki, but I'm an answer where this on a game horn. Would dinner been itzy. A wood and ruido, a man a dross, be minute at all. Nid Golka City of Honam, a pen upon to Nol and the Clutton. Mile Davis, a cathedral back and draw, Mabut Sezi Moun, a Mile Davis and Huir, a Markham Jones of an unseathy pocket. Be with a Theo Marvai, Horayur with the Navi, Managerdin Koch and Ilau. The Bluebirds managed to secure all three points with a 2 1 win. A first goal for midfielder Jamie Veal, the pick of the bunch. He joined the start of the year, um, and yeah, great to get my first goal uh, in the manner that I did. Yeah, Jordan Davis next to me, and he was going, I love it, I love it, I love it. So, but I um, was with Penn's Labrys with last year, so I. Uh, I had a funny feeling I might be able to do him today. It was a win that resulted in the Haverford West County manager receiving the Cymru Premier Manager of the Month award for the very first time, having taken a maximum nine points from nine. Corey, Haverford West and uh, Newtown both neck and neck in the race for top six. Does that make today a six-pointer? Yeah, definitely. I think we both on a good run of form. Winning, I think we both on three games. It's a massive game for us today. I think if we if we get a three points, I think it pushes us up into six. I think so. Yeah, it's a huge game. Uh, you've had a difficult September October, but turned it around recently. Confidence high in the camp? Uh, yeah, I think so. We've been struggling lately with a lot of injuries, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think we got a good run going, like I just said. So I think we can hopefully take something from a game today. That last game against Penabont, a local side, a local derby, that was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a great win. You know, you, Penabont are a good team. You done. You don't go into it thinking it's going to be an easy game, obviously, and, and we we done well. We were hanging on in the end a bit, um, but yeah, it was deserving three points in the end. Uh, you've had a goal from a halfway line at this ground before. Will you see something uh, similar today? How are you on about on the way up in the car? Because Jamie Veal as well, he scored the same goal for Aberystwyth, so I'd definitely be keeping my eye out anyway. <laughs> the Bluebirds started the game well but a physical approach from the home side managed to slow down play, providing those who'd braved the freezing temperatures with very little action to see. A frustrated management team then watched on as a counter-attack from the home team opened the scoring. Dave Johnson, Nathan, Calvo Nani and then Kek Gani, or Stian Gimnokur. Oh, Bass man, take a Rustin, my end there been Rustin. When I lay, he Aris! Aris and Royal Team Kurtre Arablan. Newtown doubled their advantage late on in the game to earn a 2 0 win. It was a result that was then repeated the following week at King Coyd Campus. A tackle and higher. Lewis Rees. That's not goal. He left him, that's on. He met Cadiv, my perfect, and Rhys Fecht of it, I'm on a map. Tony Pennock, could be all over Rhys. Rhys Fecht, well. 
The upcoming festive period of fixtures allowed the Bluebird to renew their rivalry with Aberystwyth, with former Aberystwyth centre-half Lee Jenkins scoring his first goal for the club since his move from the Seasiders. Goalkeeper Lee Edzi's crucial double save kept the Bluebirds in the lead before Ben Fawcett sealed the 3-1 win late on. A bail now in Skibo in Penacai or Sash, Hulford and Cray, Mancrasia, da! A Fawcett and Ruido, a Marpointian Saf, Hulford and a Chonegi Tradiv, a Chrysad and Berfeth or there, a Fawcett and Ruido, Habio, you web. Back-to-back -back fixtures on Boxing Day and New Year's Eve against newly promoted Pontypridd United ended in disappointment as an away loss was followed with a late free-kick equaliser from Johan Evans managing to salvage a point. Johan Evans a kick! Oh, Morris! Mae Hulford yn gyfartal, wel, mae Hlyd sy'n ildio gol o gamgymeriad gwael yn y gem ar Wilson Stefan Morris sydd ar camgymeriad yn y gem hon. I can give the boys credit for keep going and plugging away, but uh, I don't think we deserve much out of that game myself. Yes, very slim chances now of finishing in the, in oh, the top six. Oh, that's been gone for weeks. Okay. That's been gone for weeks. Yeah. I haven't been thinking about top six since we lost at Newtown. Yeah. Um, that's the honesty, because... Other teams are winning more games of football and doing it more regularly. That's our season. So inconsistent. It's uh, something that we need to improve on. Excellent home attendance at the New Year's Eve fixture gave the club a chance to introduce a new clubhouse feature to supporters that the board felt was a missing piece of the jigsaw. A bespoke designed wall of fame was installed and the first three inductees were announced. As well, so, boys, if you'd like to rip the paper off, so uh, <laughs> off you go. Good love on him. Elan Zawil Dori. In the Basora, Atrai and George. With the January transfer window open, several clubs across South Wales were showing interest in some of the Haverford West County squad, but it was only Ryan George and Ivan Watkins who ended up leaving, with Ryan linking back up with former Haverford West player, manager and Hall of Fame inductee Wayne Jones, now in a new role as assistant manager of ambitious Cymru South Club, Britain Ferry Clansawell. Ivan was also to find himself in front of another former Halfway West County player and coach, Chris O'Sullivan, who was at the helm down the road at Pembrokeshire's Goodick United. <laughs> With two spaces freed up in the squad, Pennock looked to replace both the departing defender and attacker, and midway through January, former West Ham, Manchester United, and Aston Villa youngster. Oscar Borg was announced as the first January signing. When Argentina came here, I'd say, can't say I'm not Messi, which is a privilege. So I have to say Messi. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? That must. It was. It was quite surreal. Like every time I was checking my shoulder, Messi was there. It seemed a bit strange, but yeah, it was a great experience. One I'll never forget. Sure. I've known known Tony for a little while through. My, f my family know him well ever since he's been at Hull and the things it, things he's done there. So yeah, when he when he uh, gave us a call and asked us to come down, I sort of yeah jumped at the opportunity because it's a it's nice to play in a, a division in a top division in any country and the opportunities you you get from playing there are great and like like I've said before the the opportunity to get in the the European places I think any any player would would want to jump at the chance to do that, I think. Oscar's signature was soon followed by the loan signing of Cardiff City's attacker, Jack Leahy, who had just recently won the South Wales Derby for Cardiff under-21s 
with a winner late on against their closest rivals. You don't have to be from Wales to understand how big the uh, South Wales derby is, do you know what I mean? So I think for me to score that winner, um, all the Cardiff lads especially was very happy with that. Mm. Um, me as well because, I mean, it was a decent goal. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was just a really good moment for me in my mm. career as well. Got quite a lot of exposure from it. Yeah, made everyone happy all round. Coaches, players, myself. With just two games to go before the league split, TNS hosted the Bluebirds and with the reigning champions already well on the way to retaining their title in the league, the Bluebirds were able to throw everything at causing an upset. With the game well balanced, Haverford West missed the opportunity to take the lead before the full-time professionals made their chances count and, and took the lead. We will have a good dip in or shock if Cynthia. Davis, Sinkanbo, Redmond, Redmond, Peltzol, Tegas Clark, Monacovla, Manhain, if Cynthia, Clark, Midihin, Akin Kanbo, Kamler, Ruit, Tenachi Gol, Kanna Cynthia, Newid, a pen camp with Ian Gol in him at a blind, we had in Bell, Benny Camp, Tolid Kevin, Kanbo, Clark, Clark had he tried there, he tried to run near Cornell, since he never did, who fought him? Daniels at Roskish Huith, Clark, Ruan. Clark, and if Cannell, Trumbull, Trumbull, Mindy Heen, I can hit your posting. We had in Erkid, Weir, Leo Smith, Damon Gachi, that goes to goal, it's wrong now. Routley to captain, and Candlewood Williams. Williams, that's Wilson. Wilson, will I give them an in? Arpetiad. Just one goal behind, Ben Fawcett managed to get ahead of the TNS defence and equalised early in the second half in typical Welsh January rainfall. Richards, Dihun. Richards, Zeti Chara. Bellamy Box, a push in that on, on full kit, got by the Hulford, quick to Grisha Dwayne Box, a full kit, and kill up how the bell, I can eat Lazi. Before a late TNS win was rubber stamped. Since then, we have a new and Valka got rid of goal, McManus, McGinn Vole, McManus, McManus, he got another who eats. Heave score you the king drive. The way the second goal of the summer run. We can have a lot more to lay. Akmar in the team lot. But on Bechach, Tion Tiaval Hulford. The Bluebirds walked away from the encounter with no points to show for their performance, but with their heads held high as they'd managed to push the New Saints all the way. Heavy snowfall at the end of January resulted in the last game of phase one against Connors Key being postponed which meant the Nomads were now to make the long journey to Pembrokeshire for a midweek fixture. Looking to capitalise on the home advantage, a Henry Jones flick provided Elliot Duggan with the opportunity to score from his audacious effort. Ac yn codi'r bêl yn gampus dros i benne. Mae hwlffodd ar y blaen. Yr adar gleision un, Cei Conna dim. Cei Conna yn edrych i daro yn ôl yn syth. Mae'n afantais taldra amlwg gan Cei Conna. Mi hwnna dy postyn yn gosa ar ôl benni ar y gynnau cyfle. Ac ar y postyn pella, mae nhw wedi dod yn gyfartal. A Ben Nash sydd yn sgorio. Neb wrth ochr Ben Nash ar y postyn pella ac yn gosod y bêl yn gyffyrddus heibio i Zac Jones. Gigrydd gan fil. Malkin sy'n cynorthwyo ran ddiffyn. Henry Jones. Jones rhawn triciau. Asgiliau. Mae wedi creu lle fy'n hyn a derbyn y bêl nôl gan Wilson Mewnir. 
Gwn Cosby, a mae mynd i fod yn gigor smotyn ydy wir y drosedd gan Callum Morris. Cyd chwarae hyfryd rhwng Wilson a Henry Jones. Jones yn cael ei wthio yn ei gefn. Penderfyniad bach rwydd i Alex Livesey. Benath y bendroni ychydig o eiliadau pwyntio i'r smotyn a chyfle gwych fy'n hyn i hwlffordd i fi nôl ar y blaen. A mae'r bêl gan brif sgoriwr yr adar gleision Jordan Davis yn erbyn i gyn glwb. Davis yn erbyn Andy Firth. Yn cymryd i amser yn bwyllog. Davis yn rhwydo! A mae hwlffordd nôl ar y blaen. Chwe munud ar hugain wedi chwarae. Y drosedd ar Henry Jones, Davis yn manteisio o'r smotyn. Nawfed gôl y tymor i Jordan Davis. Hwlffordd dwy, ceu cona un. Ar yr ongl, yn cael ei chodi yn uchel, y mae Zach Jones wedi galw. A mae e'n casglu'n dda. A mae e'n clirio am hyll lawr y ca. Dim cam sefyll yn elbyn Elliot Duggan, y mae Duggan yn gyflymach. Na Callum Morris ac Andy Firth oedd i ar i linell, petai Elliot Duggan wedi cael ei benni fyny, oedd y rhwyd fel petai e'n wag. Y cyfle cyntaf ail hanner yr adar gleision yn mynd yn ofer. Wel, mae'r pedwerydd swyddog ni Tom Bevan wedi galw Alex Livesey ar draws, a dwi'n credu bod tipyn y brotestiadau wedi bod, a fydd hi'n gerdyn melyn cyntaf gem, a hynny i reolwr. Cei cona Neil Gibson. Jenkins a Patton i fyny o'r Cefn. Ac y postyn y gosa! Mae'r cyffyrddiad ychydig heibio'r postyn. Y gig gornel wedi chwarae mewn yn byryglus a'r cyffyrddiad oedd i ar y talged. Sydd i bod ar darged, sydd i bod yn gôl. Davies ymlaen chwilio am Wilson. Wilson mewn! Os geith ei benni fyny, mae ffyrth oedd i ar ei linell! O, mae ffyrth rhywffodd rhyw sut yn cael ei fraich i ddi. O, am gyfle i sicrhau'r tri phwynt. Ond ffyrth, mae wedi bod oedd i ar ei linell trwy gydol yr ail hanner yma. Mae'n chwarae â thân a bu bron iddo fe gael ei losgu. Tony, many congratulations on a fantastic win, a great three points for your team. Best performance of the season so far? Yeah, you know, to beat Connors Key, who haven't lost a game in what since September in the league. Um, you know, it's extremely pleasing for the boys. They've had to put a shift in. You can see that at the end, you know, how many boys are going down with cramp. But um, yeah, it's a great win to finish the phase one. Listen, we're disappointed that we're not in the top six. Um, but it's down to us now to, to see how high we can finish in the bottom six. Halford West were good in the first half. Um, you know they've got some good quality players. They've scored a 25-yard goal into the top corner, and they've scored a penalty where Henry Jones is really clever, slows himself down to feel contact, and goes down in the box. So, um, you know those are the two elements of the game that have cost us today, um, and we probably weren't didn't show the same level of quality or the same uh, cleverness in the final third. Elliot, there was a fantastic goal this evening. Have you scored a better one? I can't remember scoring one like that since I was about six years old. Like I just, for me, it was. I thought I was offside at the time, and I just turned and thought I just need to hit it. Like, and next thing I know, I was just as I looked behind the ball, I just thought oh, I was going. <laughs> and yeah, it's just one of the best things I've ever done in football, shirt, to be honest. And it spurred the team on to a fantastic performance. Yeah, the boys, we were all on there tonight. I mean, we just dug in deep. The game was so. It was just a torrid, dogged game. Like we were just. We had to scrap for every first ball, second ball, runs in behind, and it was just, but yeah, I'm sure on the eye it wasn't one of the prettiest games, but for us it felt so good to get the three points. And it's so important as well, it puts you in seventh position and all to play for now for a playoff place. Yeah, we just got to take it game by game now. Um, obviously, our goal as a team is to get that European spot through the playoffs. Um, the gaffer said that to me since I've come in and the boys, have, we've had our eyes set on it since I've come in. Um, I think it's achievable for us, like the quality we have in the dressing room. I think at times this season we've just been unlucky, but we've dug in like today and we showed we can win games. Ten more games were now in front of the Bluebirds and with Airbus almost mathematically out of the running, it teed up a race with four other clubs for the playoff qualifying spot at the top of the playoff conference.
And in terms of the domestic licence, obviously Haverford West have had a setback this week. Uh, they didn't achieve the domestic licence. What's the uh, the latest on that? We've got to mix it up a bit. We've got to be a bit more brave. Otherwise, that's quite at the back. Like he had said, he gets it sometimes. You've touched it 50 times, there's nothing on it, and we have to look for a spectacular. You know, they want to be in seventh place, Tom. It does open up a small gate towards mm -hmm. taking the, the season a little further with the playoffs then to see uh, where it goes from that. Have it all if you like, and you can have it all if you like.